All right. <coughs> Wife claims to be great, but is actually the worst. Oh, boy. Here we go. Here we go. We're going in, going, getting in quick here. Um, Bildo. That's probably not the first time you've been called that. No, it is not. But since you like to be called offensive things, I do. I'll start there. Well, thank you. Uh, I'm writing since you seem to be rather forward in your advice instead of taking a nice guy approach. I'd like to know what I should. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Here we go. Oh, it's not playing. Why I want to play? I got to get a fucking someone in here. It's time. Yeah. Hey. That's me. Sorry if that was too loud. Somebody else. All right. Asking me for advice. Always a dangerous thing. Always a dangerous thing. I'm not a licensed professional. I'm a fucking jerk off. But here's my two cents. Um, I did watch. I did watch V for Vendetta at one point. I did see that movie. I, I have seen that movie. Uh, I'm writing you since you seem to be rather forward. Blah blah blah. blah. I, I've been with a woman for ten years. We're married with one seven-year-old boy who is the absolute apple of my eye. Early in our marriage, it became very obvious that she didn't contribute much to the household. We lived in a one-bedroom apartment, and I did most of the cleaning because she never bothered to do any of it. Do you realize how many guys are in this situation? It's this weird thing where feminism told them that, oh, you're, on, you're making the guy a sandwich, and you're cleaning up, and what are you, his fucking slave? You know? Which I say is all well and good as long as you then go out and get a fucking job and you're bringing money into the house. Then I don't have you problem cleaning up as much. But if you're making half the fucking messes, you should be cleaning up half the fucking messes. Um, I, paid all, I paid all of the bills because if it was left to her to do it, we would have have late fees every month on all bills. We both worked, so she was tired at the end of the day and never cared to cook. This is understandable, but at the same but at the same time it's frustrating because she always brags about her amazing cooking skills. I know, and you worked all day, so you're tired too. Uh within a few months after the wedding, she almost stopped having sex with me. Oh wow, dude. At this point, ten years later, it's limited to about once or twice a year. She's also basically let herself go. She was about 135 pounds when we were married, but she's probably over 200 now. For some, that might not be a ton, but she's only 5'2". After about a year of this marriage disaster, I wanted to let her go, but her dad came over to attempt to work out our differences. I decided to give it another chance. And then you got pregnant, right? I decided to give it another chance within a few weeks after this conversation, she got pregnant, and I was obviously not happy about it. Yeah, I wonder how that happened. Um, she probably pulled the goalie on you there. She promised once she became a stay-at-home mom that behavior would be different. She, she'd start to clean more, cook more, go to the gym, but of course, none of that ever happened. Having a discussion about her lack of effort never goes well. She'll sleep till 9 and just watch YouTube most of the day. Wow, dude. This laziness even occurs after 6 p.m. and puts me in the spot where I must take care of our boy or nobody else will. I walk him to school every morning and put him to bed and read to him almost every night. The effort she puts in to raise our boy is atrocious. Dude, this is depressing. On top of all this, she has lied to me about her clothing purchases for years. She's also started a business using my social security number without any discussion she has proceeded to charge cards to a balance over a hundred thousand dollars despite my attempts to stop it. Well, dude, you're not you're not trying hard enough. What is she holding you down, punching you in the face, taking the cards? Take the fucking cards away from her. She has said that she wants a divorce, but I have asked for us to work it out. Every argument she pushes it again. I'm starting to think it's the right move, but I'm terrified for my little boy and his needs. I know she won't take care of him. As needed, courts usually side with the woman. I'm also scared the courts will make me pay her business credit card balances on top of child support. See, ladies, listen to this fucking guy's story. 
She's truly the worst wife that ever existed, but says I'm only, I only point out her worst traits. Honestly, is there a good trait? I struggle to find any. Her cooking, too little evidence to conclude. Hoping for a decent response from a responsible cocksucker like you. Wow, dude. If she was like half a decent mother, I would just say, I mean, everything points out of you just got to walk away from this person. You got to walk away. If the kid wasn't involved, you walk away. And who gives a fuck if they put the hundred grand on you? Okay, if you stayed with her, it would become 200 grand. All right. Um, So now all I got to do is if you're going to stay or if you're going to leave. All right, if you're going to stay, you got to take her credit cards away from her. That's it. All right? You, you have to start having ultimatums. All right? And she has to get her fucking shit together. This is it, dude. You, you need ultimatums here. I'm taking away the credit cards, and you have to get your shit together, or this isn't going to work out. And that's fucking it. That's it. Because you are literally a prisoner in this fucking relationship. Granted, this is just your side of it, but this is pretty vivid. So um, I might talk to a lawyer before you have this conversation and just see if there's a way to prove that she's as bad as you're saying that you would get custody. Um, because the reality of what you have going on here, dude, this is a divorce where you want, you want to go for full custody. Um, and if that's what you're leaning towards, I would go to a lawyer first without her knowing and find out what evidence you need to prove that you should at least get 50% of being with your kid. Because here's the thing too. You don't want your kid not, your kid still loves her mom unconditionally. So, um, you sound like a great dad. You sound like you're, you know, you're out there, you're earning money. You're not doing anything wrong. You're putting up with a ridiculous level of childish fucking behavior. Um, It sounds like you've sat down and tried to talk to her. It hasn't fucking worked. Um, You know what, dude? I would get out of this. I'd get out of this because what's going to happen is she's going to end up having 300 grand in fucking credit card debt and then she's going to put that on you and then try to get custody and all of this shit. Um, I don't know. Or maybe you try to give her one more chance. But I would talk to a lawyer first, find out what your fucking options are so you can play this as perfectly as you can. Um, I'm hoping in the in the future, court systems will re- realize that the guy, the guy is not always the, the person that's wrong in a relationship. And it isn't always best for the kid to be with the mother. Um, I understand why that is, you know, watching my daughter, how she reacted to, to having a baby brother and just their instincts is fucking incredible. But like, that doesn't mean that there's not selfish sociopaths or fucking pieces of shit that happen to have vaginas out there. Um, all right. So that's what I would do, sir. I would go talk to a lawyer and find out what my fucking options are. And, um, You know, the other option is you just hang in there till your son's 18 and then you just fucking pull the ripcord and get the fuck out. But by then, dude, by then, how much money in credit card debt has she racked up? You know, then there's a diabolic side where you just you encourage her to keep eating and you hope she drops of a fucking heart attack. There's a lot of options here. None of them friendly. All right. Girlfriend finds another man attractive, finds other men attractive. All right, sup, Bill? I'm 23-year-old from New Hampshire and have recently met a new woman. We've been dating for a few months now, and she is damn near perfect. One of the only things she does that bothers me is she will often talk about how attractive she finds certain male celebrities. Oh, give me a break. Those aren't real people. She will even post things about these certain celebrities on her Instagram story from time to time, basically boasting about how hot she thinks they are. My question is, do I have the right to tell her to stop? I have no problem with her finding other people attractive. Everyone, everyone does. But when she boats publicly about them, it makes me feel like shit and a bit insecure. Um, I mean, come on, man. I mean, the fuck? I mean, Brad Pitt is Brad Pitt. Ryan Gosling's Ryan Gosling. I mean, they, they're going to find him attractive. They're never going to run into him. 
You know, and if she wants to do that, she gives a shit. And I, I personally, I wouldn't bother me. He goes, am I being a pussy or my feelings here valid? Your, your feelings are always valid. What you have to wonder is where they're coming from. Um, anyways, he goes, I've told her it bothers me before, but I'm not trying to be controlling of her. So she still does it from time to time. I would not do this, and I find it disrespectful. Well, it seems like she, she lowered it, and just from time to time she does it. Anyway, sure, there are other people out there, and she can find some, find some attractive, but when she flaunts her feelings about them to the world, it makes me wonder why I am pouring my heart out to this girl if she's going to give attention to other men, even if they are unattainable. Thanks, and stay safe, kid. Uh, well, this is what I would do. Why don't you post, if you want to be a, a vindictive, V for vendetta, vindictive lunatic, you should post and say how hot you find uh, Sally Sugar Tits, whatever, whoever the fuck is the hot chick. I'm, I'm too old to know anymore. Yeah, why don't you, uh, oh, Margot Robbie, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Why don't you fucking post some pictures of her with her f- dirty feet up on that movie seat? Um, yeah, but that's a dangerous game to play. That's a dangerous game to play. Um, I think that, you know, it's just, she's just into this shit the way you might be into sports. That's all. Where you would post a picture of some fucking linebacker going, this guy's an absolute beast. They're like, oh my God, this guy's a fucking dreamboat. I mean, I, I really wouldn't, you know, if she suggested that you move to Hollywood, even if you were in Hollywood, she's still never going to meet these fucking people. So, I mean, I, I, of all the things you could be upset about, I would let that I would let that one go. Um I would let it go personally, I would. Uh all right. Top but having said that, if it was the other way around and you were posting about um one of these stars out here, women, you know, I think that she would if she had a fucking problem about it, you without a doubt would have to fucking stop. I mean, and that that is the male female dynamic in a nutshell is basically they can kind of do whatever the fuck they want. Cause the narrative out there is if you say that they should stop doing something cause it hurts your feelings that you're being controlled. Let me even said, I'm not trying to be controlling. Am I just a pussy? Right. Cause you actually, she's doing something that bothers you. The other way around is you need to validate her feelings. It's, you know, it's the, you know, the reason why women always talk about that whore stud double standard is because if they, if they looked at all the other double standards, those are all wins for them. Um, all right, let's get through the goddamn people writing in here. All right, re flat earth. This is a flat earther, everybody. He says, hey, pasty. Uh, last time I wrote in about flat earth, I tried to explain a motive for it which was basic, oh, because I was like, what is the motive for telling people that it's round when it's really flat? He said, which uh, I tried to explain the mo- a motive for it, which was basically along the lines of, there was a lot of money to be made in the idea of space. You and your guests, I don't remember who it was, who he was, said that it would be impossible to get 100% of the governments on the same page with this big of a lie which would make sense if more than three country, countries have been to space. Oh, Jesus Christ. America, Russia, and China are the only countries to go to space. So you'd only need the three of the most powerful governments to be in on the lie. So I think it's more probable than you and your friend made it out to be. Hey, buddy, you don't need to go to space to know the world is round. You just get in a fucking boat and you start sh- sailing west and you keep going till you get back to your house again. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Dude, dude, get on that boat. Get on that fucking boat. Go to Antarctica. Go find the fucking ice wall. Take some fucking pictures and then I'll believe you. Um, the best part of waking up is knowing the earth is round. Um, hollow earth. Dear Billy Vem, as in J- Jewel, oh, dear, dear Billy Vern, as in Jewel Vern. I don't know what that means. If you think that flat, think flat earth is crazy, you should look into hollow earth. Apparently there's a hole in the Arctic that leads to the center of the earth. Apparently Al Gore is one of the few people who has received permission 
to go to this Arctic gate. There are great artist illustrations to give if you give it a Google. Seems legit to me. I don't, does that make the earth hollow if there's a hole that goes to the center of it? Let me ask you this. If you take a fucking nail and you, you hammer it into the center of an apple and then you take the nail out, is the apple now hollow? That just means there's a fucking hole in the center of the earth. I don't give a shit about that as long as I don't fall into it. The fuck, what the fuck is all of this about? Who gives a shit if it's round, flat, or hollow? I don't give a fuck. Is it still spinning? Is the sun coming up tomorrow? Good. I got other shit to fucking worry about. Jesus Christ, you guys are like bird watchers with like dirt. <laughs> it's just a fucking obscure hobby. Go, go fucking do it. Um, by the way, I saw a fucking clip of a snake that got stuck in a spider web and a black widow was like, I think it was just sitting there. I don't know if it paralyzed it with its poison or what. It was fucking nuts. I can't believe it was real. How the fuck did a snake get all the way up into that thing? Um, maybe he just watched that Michael Jordan thing come fly with me and he got all amped up and decided to fucking, you know. I mean, that's, you know what? That's a fucking Pixar movie right there. A snake that wants legs. So sick of just scurrying around the ground. You know, one of his best friends is a centipede. And there's a couple of songs in there and some message about fucking live and let live. I don't know. And the snake just learns. In the end, everybody with legs gets stuck in something, but because it's a fucking snake it can go down the hole that leads to the center of the earth and the snake proves that the earth is hollow and that's the end of the movie there you go i don't know you just fucking have famous people do the voices i don't know you guys figure it out all right chinese food rec what does that mean chinese food wreck i don't know what that means all right dear mr i hope this is somebody from china oh chinese food recommendations oh my god what a good shit. All right. So I was asking my Chinese listeners, if I have any, to give me the heads up saying you don't have to tell me where your favorite place is to go. You don't have to ruin it by telling a white guy where it is. Just give me your second favorite place where you go. So here we go. Uh, dear Mr. What's going on? It's Bill Burr and it's time for the Thursday afternoon just before Friday Monday morning podcast. Belly button. Um, I am your, I am a, your fan from China. How wild is that? What's up, man? How you doing? Are you in bed right now? <laughs> well, you're listening. I'm thinking if you in bed as I'm writing this thing. Actually, no, they're like fucking 14 hours ahead of us. He's probably staring at the clock right now going, how the fuck am I going to get through another day of this goddamn job? All right. I am your fan from China. I enjoy listening to your podcast when I walk around the river in my city. River? I often laughed hard when I listened to it. Like when you did the impression of your daughter, Dad, you're the greatest in the world. As a mom of an eight-year-old, I can sense your inner happiness and smartness. Isn't that nice? And you still like me because I assumed you were a guy? Um, since you want to know which Chinese restaurant to go in L.A. for authentic Chinese food, I searched online and asked my relatives in L.A. In LA what a good shit. Thank you. So here comes my recommendations. I know you hate bad internet information, but we do trust the restaurant recommendation app I, I use, and also I ask my relatives. That's the big one in L.A. All right. Now, am I going to share these with everybody else? Yes, of course I'm going to. All right. She has given me two. All right. Number one is Din Tai Feng, D-I-N-T-A-I-F-E-N-G, and then she has the, the uh, Chinese alphabet characters there to spell it out which is also really cool you know be fucking hilarious is if i had that tattoo on me because that's like a big thing out here right there was a big thing in like the 90s into the 2000s of people who didn't speak chinese getting chinese lettering on them and these guys were just fucking with them writing like uh you know egg roll and duck sauce or whatever um anyway it's more like a imagine if i read that and my i thought i had courage strength and honor in Chinese, on my forearm, and it turns out I had Din Tai Feng, just the name of a restaurant. They used my forearm for advertising. They never paid me. That'd be fucking hilarious. 
Um, it's more like a fusion of Chinese food. So you can find a huge variety of food there, like Cantonese food, Northern Chinese food, Southern Chinese food, etc. It's a chain store too. I don't know if I like that. People can find it in Singapore, Thailand, and other places. I have to say it's way better than Panda Express. The must-try one is Juicy Pork Dumpling. All right. It's in Torrance, California on Hawthorne Boulevard. Good deal. All right. Number two is Sichuan Expression. S-I-C-H-U-A-N. I apologize to all Chinese people with this brutal pronunciation. I'm trying here. Expression. I think Sichuan food excels in all Chinese cuisines. It's like the Cajun food in Louisiana. It holds a reputation for its huge variety of seasonings used as each dish requires different cooking methods. As the saying goes, one dish with one flavor with 100 dishes comes 100 flavors. Uh, Sichuan food is well known for its hot and spicy flavor. I'm in. Though it may sport sweet and sour flavors too. The most commonly used spices are the five fragrances, which consist of fennel, pepper, any seed, cinnamon, and clove, chili, and Sichuan pepper. Obviously, I was born in Sichuan, but I have been to many different places in China, so I know lots of people over the country love the food if you can bear spicy food. All right. If you cannot have spicy food, you can try Kung Pao chicken. Isn't that just like a fucking regular? Are you fucking with me here? Twice cooked pork. And don't forget the snack. It's the fried rice. All right. I need to expand, extend my gratitude to you because I know more about NFL and college football. Thank you for being the sports culture ambassador. Your podcast lights my day and is also a super great way for me to practice my listening. Look at that. She's learning in English, listening to my dumbass. By the way, I I realize that your listeners are man- probably the other day, but I as a woman feel super happy that I enjoy myself when I listen to you ramble about daily life stuff and sports. I even wonder what heritage pork was once. <laughs> Look forward to your Super Bowl podcast. Go fuck yourself. Best wishes, Ying. Hey, Ying, thank you for listening and thank you for the recommendations. I'm going to try that spicy one. Um, I'm going to actually try both of them. Um, God knows I got the time, man pandemic continues all right advice different relationship with woke sister oh difficult relationship with woke sister all right now is that it's sister s-i-s-t-e-r so i mean i feel like that's a relative if it was s-i-s-t-a then uh, then then it'll be a different thing right all right hey bill i'm a recent big fan and lady listener look at this two ladies in a row my boyfriend introduced me to you. We watched Paper Tiger and had my political and I had my political defenses up. He saw me making faces and just told me to wait and hear you out. I opened my mind and really heard what you were saying. It was hilarious. You brought my defenses down and taught me a lot. Now you're fa- you're my favorite comedian. I listen to every podcast. Look at that. Look at that. I brought you into my world of ignorance. Um, I have a difficult relationship with my sister because although she seems to be doing better. She's 20 years old and has already dealt with so much depression. That sucks. However, it just keeps getting harder to keep a relatively good relationship with her. Yeah, it's exhausting. It's exhausting to have a relative that's depressed to try to fucking pull them up off the mat every day is exhausting. You know, as much as you want to help them out, you know, there there are times where you're just like, fuck. Anyway, however, it just keeps getting harder and harder to keep a relatively good relationship with her. Uh, I've always tried to help her as much as I can as a sister, but she sulks a lot and really feels sorry for herself. It affects our relationship because she insists on keeping us, parentheses, me and her other sister, at a distance to protect us, in quotes. She doesn't realize how much of a cop-out that is. We all have struggles. Well, it just seems like she's being, there's a difference between actually being depressed and just being a mopey asshole. I would think, with my lack of any sort of psychology degree. Uh, She thinks hers are worse than anyone's. She's also glued to her phone when we hang out and can't hold a conversation with me despite my many attempts. All right, is she depressed or is she self-involved? That's the question for me at this point. Anyways, 
It seems like she spends all of her time on social media, so it seems fitting with all that with all this that she would fall victim to the white women hijacked woke movement. Would also be if she's on social media all the time, you, that's also they say it really is bad if you're a depressed person. Anyway, this is part of the reason I don't feel comfortable around her. I can't be myself. I feel like I have to walk on eggshells. Well, what is she going to do? Cancel you from the fucking Thanksgiving table? You got to go the other way. I would just start acting extra ignorant, um, which I think is the solution to all of this. All of these overly sensitive fucking people, you just you just act like more of an asshole. It's the, it, and it truly is. That is the balance of nature. If you're going to get overly sensitive, I'm going to be overly annoying. If you're going to fucking be a good shit, I'll meet you in the middle. Um, all right. I feel like I have to walk on eggshells around her or she'll jump on me for saying something wrong. On Christmas, I was showing my parents comedians in cars getting coffee. My mom wanted to watch the Dave Chappelle episode, and my sister blew up at us about how we made some violently transphobic comments and went to her room. She came out remembering that it was Christmas <laughs> and we had to get through dinner. I haven't talked to her since, but she's being fake nice at dinner and I couldn't stand it. Hey, you know what? Sometimes you got to let people just go through their shit and let her walk out. And then what you do is you watch the comedians in car with Dave Chappelle and you act, you just laugh extra loud. Ugh, you laugh like fucking De Niro in Cape Fear when he was at the movies. Um, since my problem with her is twofold, I don't know how to approach it. I'm tired of trying to meet her halfway. She calls me and acts like she wants to hang out, but she... But when she does, she doesn't do anything. It's like she's not even there. How do I explain to her how I feel without her getting defensive? Should I even try to talk to her at all? Where should I start? Anything helps. Thank you for reading. I appreciate your perspective. Yeah, you are completely being held hostage by her emotions. All right? This person doesn't sound depressed to me. They just sound like a fucking asshole. Um... This is what I would try. But, you know, if she really is depressed, I don't want you to say something fucked up to her and God forbid she does something crazy. So what I would do is I just would stop fucking reaching out to her as much. And um, when you hang around her, if she wants to be a mopey asshole, that is not your fucking problem. When you were a kid and you laid in bed and you were like, what is my dream in life? Is my dream in life to cheer up mopey assholes? Try to figure out why they're mopey, even though I was in a good fucking mood. Fucker. If you want to watch Comedians in Cars with Dave Chappelle, you watch that shit. She doesn't want it. She wants to go to her room. Fine, let her go to her room. Then when she comes out screaming and yelling, be like, look, I want to watch this. I didn't tell you not to go to your room. I didn't try to make you stay here. Yeah, I don't know. She's only 20. Maybe she'll grow out of it. Hopefully you guys will laugh about it someday, but I think it's really not about her at this point. I need, I think you need to sort of reclaim your own happiness. And when you're around people, even if they're relatives and they don't make you happy, then you know it. You need to fucking protect yourself. All right, just go hang out with somebody fun, have a good time. Um, oh my God, I would break her balls to be like, little sister. You know what I love about you? You remind me why I love my friends so much. Because they're not you. No, you can't be that mean. That's what I would do. I, I would. I would. I think you're. 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 You've sort of lost yourself in this, and I think it's from what you've told me. She's just being. She's being a little controlling. Um, and if she wants to hang out, and she's gonna sit and look at her phone. Then she's she's being a douche. I would just look over. You know. You know. You can look at your phone at home. What the fuck did you come over here for? Drinking my goddamn booze. Um, but know that I'm a douche. So there is that. Take all, and I have no degree in anything. So good luck to you. All right. I got to be honest with you. I read that whole thing and I felt bad for you. I didn't feel bad for her at all. Fucking idiot stormy, storming down the goddamn hall. All right. 1966 dash the trap. All right. My name's Sid, spelled C Y D. Um, I am a woman. Three in a row. And a computer programmer. Love your podcast. I, too, turn to it to get me through these uncertain times like a junkie. Well, thank you for listening. He's, she says, my movie recommendation <clears throat> is the 1966 movie The Trap with Oliver Reed. Hard to find, though. I bet I could find it online. It's got to be somewhere. 
And also, uh, you like them animal prey shows. You got to see the show I Was Prey, specifically season two, episode three, about the hippo and the tour guide. Oh, my God. This is people who almost got eaten. The whole I Was Prey series about people being turned into prey by wild animals. Better than a horror movie. Okay, that's all for now. I can't say it. I was raised not to curse, so I can only vocalize alone to my computer screen. GFY. I respect that. Nice, classy person. Uh, The Trap. I will definitely check that out. Well, thank you guys for writing in. Loved hearing from the ladies. Um, Love hearing from people around the world. All of that shit. Love it. Love hearing from sports fans, the whole goddamn thing. So thank you guys for listening.